If you are a manager or a leader, you will have to lead difficult conversations at some point. It is unavoidable, but often these conversations can make you feel so nervous from the start or feel awkward while you're in it and even linger on your mind weeks after the conversation has passed. Sometimes it can feel easy to just want to avoid these conversations and hope for the issue to go away, but that is rarely the case. And so in this video today, I'm going to share with you practical tips to make it easier to engage and manage these difficult conversations. My name is Anne Koopman and I'm a former engineer and senior leader in the manufacturing industry. And now I'm a leadership coach for emerging leaders and an expert for team development. Make sure that you subscribe below to not miss out on any future videos in this channel because I regularly update new videos about leadership tips, self-development and how to build effective teams. Today I will share with you why difficult conversations are so important, how to prepare for difficult conversations and practical tips to implement during the conversation itself. So why are difficult conversations so important? There can be many reasons for difficult conversations as a manager in the workplace. It could be about setting your boundaries. It could be about providing difficult feedback. It could be about um, approaching and discussing behavior that is not in alignment with the company values. Or it also could be tricky conversations with customers about the product requirements and acceptance. And as I said in the intro, it can feel so tempting to just avoid the issue, close our eyes and just hope it will magically disappear. But usually that is not the case. And by not approaching the issue or bringing it up on the table, it's going to cost you way more in the end. If it's about your personal boundaries, it could cost you your time and emotional energy. If it's about a conflict, it could also drain your energy because things are keep coming up and you're going to replay certain scenarios in your head. You're going to lose sleep over the issues. And it can also obviously have consequences that are quality or product related or even performance related for the organization. So it's important that you learn the skills to approach these difficult conversations because the outcome is so worth it. But I know it can feel tricky sometimes and it can make you feel really nervous and scared. But avoiding these conversations is going to hurt your relationships and it's going to hurt you in the end. How do we prepare for difficult conversations? So I think this is one key thing to remember that you are a new or emerging manager and you probably didn't get much or any training on how to be a leader. And even if you get training on how to be a leader, it seldom focuses on how to approach difficult conversations. So of course you will need a little bit of time to practice and prepare. And that's why you're watching this video. So that's great. Preparation is absolute key when it comes to managing difficult conversations. So of course we feel nervous when we have to engage in difficult conversations because we might be nervous about the emotional reactions of the other person. We are nervous about any consequences or even conflict. I still remember the first conversation where I had to let somebody go and it was for sure the toughest conversation I've had to have as a leader and it still stuck with me afterwards. But what I learned from this experience is that preparation is really key, especially if you have to develop difficult news to somebody then you want to be as calm, as confident as possible because you want to allow space for them to process the information and you want to be really clear with what you're saying because to be clear means to be kind. And so you want to prepare so you can deliver your message really, really well. But before we go into the different steps of what you need to prepare, I also want to state and make sure that you are aware of that you are not responsible for the emotions of the other person. You can't control how they will react, what they are going to say or how they are going to feel because you don't know everything that's going on for them on their mind in their private life, in their history. You can't control how they will react and you're not responsible for their reactions or what they say or feel. However, what you are responsible for is obviously what comes out of your mouth and how you prepare the conversation. You're responsible for choosing the right time and the right location and to prepare yourself, your emotional state and your 
objective for the conversation well beforehand. So there's a circle of control for you that you are absolutely responsible for. But sometimes we do as leaders have to communicate bad news and this will have an impact on how people are feeling. But that is your job as a manager. But you can make that process as easy as possible. So let's look at a few things that are important for you in how to prepare for difficult conversations. You want to get clear about the problem. What is the problem? What's the impact of the problem? What's the history of the problem? And how does it show up? Then you want to understand what is your desired outcome. So think about what is it that you want to see change? Is it something about interaction, the way you work together? Is it about performance? What is your desired outcome from this conversation? If it's about having a conflict with someone, how would you like this to look after? Becoming really clear on your desired outcome is so important because this is where the motivation lies to even engage in this difficult conversation. If you can paint your picture for yourself that after this conversation, it will get better and easier yeah, then you will feel motivated and you know that this is the right way to go. And then even throughout the conversation, if things start to get a bit tricky, you can come back to that objective in your mind, the desired outcome so that you stay on track. Then the next step is to plan the meeting. Really think about when and where is this meeting going to take place? What's the best environment? And is there anybody else who needs to be there? And also what's the best time in the week and in the day? This is really important depending on what you're going to talk about. Next, you want to spend some time to prepare some kind of opening statement. There's a framework by Susan Scott that I really like, and it helps you to create an opening statement that takes less than 60 seconds. That is kind of your lead in and your start into that conversation. In this statement, you want to name the issue. You want to describe examples of the issue. So be really specific. You want to describe your emotions around that. And then you want to create um, a statement around the impact that this problem is having on the team or on the organization or on your relationship. From there, you want to clarify why this is so important for you to solve. And really important, you want to identify your contribution. So whenever there is an issue or a conflict, there's always a role that you play. There's always something that you have done. Maybe you didn't bring up the point earlier, or maybe you said something, or you didn't listen properly, or you forgot something. So make sure that you show that you also understand that you have a contribution as well. And then make sure that they understand that you want to solve it. And then lastly, invite them for their perspective. So if you prepare this opening statement of naming the issue, clear example, what's the emotional impact for you? What's the impact on the team or organization? Why is this important to be solved? What's your contribution? And then invite them to also share their perspective. It's a really strong, great opening statement. And if you prepare that in time, it will mean that you don't get too nervous and then you stumble over your words and you don't know what to say. And I'm sure we've all had these moments where we were like, okay, I'm gonna speak up, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna talk about the issue. And then we get so nervous and we are not quite able to say clearly what we wanted to say. And afterwards we think, oh my God, this did not go as I wanted and I was not able to clearly communicate what was important to me. So I prepare this, take time. It's really key. And the often, more often you do it, the easier it will get. But it's really key to take time to prepare this opening statement and prepare yourself for the conversation. And so then when it's time to meet, make sure that you take time to self-regulate. I know I mentioned this quite often, but self-regulation is key as a leader to be able to understand our emotions and what we're feeling in the moment and then giving ourselves a chance to take a deep breath or relax or walk for a few minutes to help and shift that negative energy out of our body and that nervous feeling so that we can be as calm and neutral as possible when we enter the conversation. It's really key. And then in the conversation, after you've stated your opening statement, make sure that you listen and tune into your empathy to really understand their point of view and understand what this means for them and the impact this is having on them. And Towards the end of the meeting, make sure that together you define a resolution. What are your steps from here? What do you agree on doing? What are the changes that you both want to do? And then define how will you follow up? Maybe is there going to be another meeting? What are the next steps for both of you? Make sure that you are in agreement with that. And then thank them so much for showing up and stating again how important this was for you and that you appreciate that they took part of this conversation. And when the meeting is over... 
take a deep breath, give yourself a pat on the back. You did so well. Like having difficult conversations is so, so difficult. And I know, and I've seen so many leaders that just avoided that. They just were not to be seen and they just ignored issues until it was too big of an impact on other individuals, on the culture, and there was no turning back. So make sure that you speak up. Difficult conversations need a lot of courage because you're putting yourself out there without knowing or having any control over the outcome. So it does take courage to show up and be vulnerable in these moments. But I know that you can do it. And I know that with this steps and this preparation, you will feel much more confident going into it. There's no magic pill. We sometimes have to go through it. And it does take courage, as I said, but preparation is key and you can do it. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite or best tip or what are your challenges when it comes to having tricky conversations. And if you want to have more tips around providing feedback or one-on-one -on -one meetings with individuals, then check out these videos here with some really cool tips for you.